If you've got a flat or one waiting to happen, call Big O's Tires in Prairieville. We offer fast and friendly service for all types of equipment, from big rigs to golf carts. Don't let a tire keep those tractors or cherry pickers out of commission for long. We've got a complete supply of automotive and commercial tires available. Big O's Tires is family owned and operated and has more than 35 years experience in the industry. Call Big O's for on-site service or repair. We'll get you back to work in a hurry. Hi right, folks, welcome to another edition of Ascension Outdoors. I'm Lyle Johnson. I'm Goosey Guys. <laughs> South Louisiana, I guess I should explain. Looks like the kind of home for my kind of man. We were fishing in Bayou streams and dreaming from dream to dream. Flipping on what Mama Nature store. You won't believe the things I saw on no Lake Marapon. Mama Nature, you're gonna drive us all insane. For the rustle of their wings in that cold December wind brings me back to the banks of Marapon. Ascension Outdoors is brought to you by the following sponsors. Man, I'll tell you what, we've been having some brutally cold weather. Yeah. And I know everybody's probably ready because we had some teases, you know, a few 70 sure. degree days, beautiful. Yeah. But, you know, we're fortunate to live in South Louisiana. Man, oh, we're fortunate. I'll tell you what, you know, some of the events that we attend, you know, uh, this, this past year, you know, it was good to see our East Ascension Gonzales Ducks Unlimited chapter get right. back together. You know, just a lot of hospitality there, you know. Right. Going, you, uh, you know, through the Christmas holidays, you know, you go down to Gramercy, to the barn fire festival and right. all the hospitality that people there give right. you you know and and things like that what a what a great uh, event there and and i had a fortune to be a part of the donaldsonville ducks unlimited Bank. banquet just recently you know right and uh as banquets go you know that's one of a top notch one right there especially right. when it comes to food right. and stuff that they have then of course there's a big attendance whole lot of people go to it um uh, fantastic event right you know and i tell you from the assortment of food they had there a lot it, they had ball shrimp grilled shrimp fried shrimp fried fish duck breast grill right oysters grill raw oysters fried right fried oysters uh i mean it, the list goes on and then, and then Top all that, a, a big meal after that with gumbo, right. things of that nature, fried soft shell crabs, fried frog legs. I mean, and these these guys put on a fantastic event. And one of the things I always thought was spectacularly really great about it is the amount of youth that That's they have true, yeah. involved right. to help out with that. Right. And that is fantastic, you know. Talk about banquets and stuff, you know, there's, there's so many in our area. You can even go back to the CCA banquet that right. we've had here in Ascension in the past. this past year. And every year, that's, that's a big time one there. I'm talking right. about one of the top in the state. But uh, coming up, hopefully this year, and I haven't heard any word on it yet, but hopefully we have our Turkey Federation right. banquet right. also. Right. But uh, it's just, like you say, to live where we live, and be a hunter and fisherman. Yeah, and you know, I heard on the radio this week uh, a clip from Mardi Gras, and they was interviewing people in New Orleans sure. that weren't from Louisiana. Right. And they just time and time again talked about how well they were treated 
and how mm -hmm. much people like to feed them. Yep. Even at Mardi Gras, you know, they got, you know, on the outskirts of the parades, they got sure. people that got food and all that kind of stuff. And they just, they can't believe the hospitality and they can't believe the food and how much people enjoy feeding them. If I attended, and there's another, that's another good event. I attended the Thibodeau Mardi Gras event. And, you know, speaking of outdoorsmen, you know, there's a float that comes by. That's a fisherman's float. Right. There's another float that comes by as a hunter's float. Up and down the boulevard where I was at, you know, different people cooking outdoor animal, game and, right. and fish that right. they had harvested itself right, right here from Louisiana. I mean, you didn't have to go far to get a piece of deer sausage or right. whatever the case may be. It's fantastic. Yeah. I tell you, if it's a lot of things we get a good thing to do down here, but I tell you what, we eat pretty good. <laughs> and we don't mind feeding people either. No, right? that's, you, you, you run into that all the time. You know, you do it yourself, you know. Right. Uh, you invite people to your sure. house, you know, and you cook fish. And we got an opportunity to do that here as well, you know, catch fish here, cook them and clean them right here, you know, and invite people over. And it's, to me, that's, that's one of the best parts of life is enjoying the fellowship. Sure. And usually it's around food of some sort, yeah. especially in South Louisiana, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. No, no doubt about that, man. It's just, y'all you know, just some great people out there. Right. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to be a part of that. And uh, things will, you know, it's been cold here this year. Right. But when you look it up north, how cold oh, it's man, been, it's I been mean, been we can't man. complain about oh, how cold of a winter we had. I mean, all you got to do, you know, you, you always say, if you want to see somebody worse shape, you ain't got to look too look much too further. Far, that's right. and, and you sure don't. And they don't have the opportunity at this time of the year that we do a lot of these events that we talking about right now take place in the day of the winter and and the joy of the outdoors even right. like we do i i don't see how they make it man right. i really don't well look the rainbow trout don't mind the cold weather no they so sure that's don't so we get ready to uh do here is go right. down to lamar dixon huh? that was that's right that's a big plus right there by putting those fish in that pond because that is one species of fish that Loves does the cold. bite right. when everything else in Louisiana is, is kind of a dead time of they the year. They got some really. places you can drill holes in the ice and catch them. <laughs> <No doubt. laughs> That's right. Well, luckily I didn't have to do that. No, we don't have to do that here. All right, folks, y'all stay tuned after the break. We'll be right back with some rainbow trout fishing and Lamar Dixon. <laughs> Roland J. Robert Distributor in Burnside has been keeping South Louisiana fueled up since 1924. We provide wholesale fuel and petroleum products to industries and service stations. We also specialize in the development of retail convenience stores. Our people have the expertise and support to help you start a thriving business. If you're looking to build your own Chevron, Shell, or unbranded service station, call Keith, Jim, or Harold. Get fueled up with Roland J. Robert Distributor. Harry Robert Insurance Agency has been serving the people of Ascension Parish for more than 40 years. Personal contact and attention to detail is what this family business is all about. From commercial policies to home and life insurance, we shop for the best rates and coverages to meet your needs. And finding the right policy is just the beginning. From there, we will be in touch every step of the way. For quality coverage and excellent customer service, come see us at Harry Robert Insurance Agency. Our doors are always open. Freezing cold. Most of our native fish about to freeze to death. We, we had some small fish kills down in the marsh, you know, and that's understandable for uh, for South Louisiana when it gets that cold. But these rainbow trout that they stock in these ponds, 
that's right up their alley to be cold, so it don't really bother them. It's amazing, really. A lot of places they live naturally that uh, whole body of water freezes over, you know, ice maybe a foot deep or so. And uh, didn't seem to bother these, though. It just started warming up a little bit. But uh, that in there, he took a pink marshmallow on the bottom. I was just getting ready to put it on top. I see some of them hitting on top out there, flopping around on top. Uh, I tried to catch them all the fish, but I couldn't do it. He fell for the pink marshmallow. You like a pretty nice one here. It is nice before he jumps into it. Yeah. Come on in here, baby. Have another one on a pink marshmallow. So far, that's been my best bait for the day of the pink marshmallow. On bottom, I, I see them hitting on top. I just put a line out with a cork on it up top and uh, see if I can't catch one suspended. I have caught them suspended before in those break ponds in Baton Rouge. But uh, I, like I say, they're hitting out there, but a lot of times you see them hitting on top like that, you won't be able to catch them with the, with the uh, baits. Seen that happen several times where they was hitting on top and I could not catch them. But uh, he, although they're hitting on top, they're biting on bottom. Does that make any sense? That's a nice one there, pretty fish. I guess everybody's got a different way of doing it. That gentleman there said that he, uh, what he's doing, he's just paddling around. He got two rod, uh, rods stuck out the back of his boat, paddled around trolling like. And uh, he said he caught like 60 something one day this week, or one evening. Yeah, still got it. Definitely, by all means, the pink marshmallow is working best for me today. No doubt about that. Pink marshmallow is definitely the trick. I try with a cork out there, but I can't catch them with a cork. Uh, gentleman told me a while ago, though, he said when the sun comes out, they'll start biting better. Well, the sun came out and caught one. It's been about 15 minutes since I caught one. That man jumped on. Beautiful little fish. Bad. Is definitely the bait of choice for today. No doubt. The pink mushroom is definitely the bait of choice for today. I got lines baited with other stuff. They are eating that thing up. Well, he just threw that one out of his mouth and I ain't got many more of them left. Oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Now that nail was dead, dead on bottom? On the bottom. I know you tried to, uh, like I did with the cork, and let the cork sit, I mean, sink it sit on bottom and have a cork on it, where you could tell when one was biting, but I'm like you, I didn't have no success with that. That's a strong little fish, Goosey. Yeah, they're strong. I mean, they, they, they're powerful. You can't hardly hold them when they moves around. No, they jump. You can feel that power at him, you know? Mm -hmm. They are strong. Like he's got muscles, boy. Anyway, not the best eating of fish, but they put it. Yeah, they are. They say after they've been in here a month or so, that the, the uh, meat will be much flakier and better. I don't know. We have to wait and see, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, it's fun catching them. <laughs> some of these fights. Oh, that, that is some fighting little fish right there. Yeah, got to tangle up in the other line I had out there, but that's all right. I can get that undone somehow or another. You know, you was talking about the taste of them a while ago. Yeah, uh, catch Cormier, which is. Very familiar with these kind of fish and all, uh, being that he's uh, the starter of the Red Stick Fly Club, uh, uh, 
fly fishing areas. So they they those guys do a lot of fly fishing and stuff, and they keep up with different kind of fish that hit on flies. Well, he did make mention the other day in an article in a sportsman magazine that uh, the hatchery raised fish is naturally fed with some artificial feed that that don't make them taste as good as first, like you was just saying just a few minutes ago. So. Uh, but after a while, they get to feeding on the native species of stuff after they're stocked in a place, and, and the taste of them is better. I really had a bite on another line that I had, and this one jumped on it. You know, we were talking just a minute ago. I, I'm going to tell you something right now. I have never seen a species of fish that swallow a bait like these fish right here. I ain't, I ain't never seen that before. I mean. You know, most of the time, whether you're tight lining or whatever you're doing, you catch a fish, a lot of times, you know, naturally, you let them bite it and they, they will swallow it. But, uh, but most of the time, you catch a fish in his, in his lips somewhere. Rainbow trout, for whatever reason they is, they, they are vicious feeders. I, I don't know if it's just been a while since they've been fed or not. These fish been in Lamar Dixon now for like four weeks. So they should be in tune with the feeding for sure around here by now. But for whatever reason, they will gulp down a bait quick like. Come on. Yeah, boy. Yeah. I don't mean many, many more. I'll have me a nice little mess of fish. Uh, again, all of them on, on the uh, marshmallows today. Like I say, for some reason, you gotta throw away out there what's weird about it. What's weird about it is, is that they're coming up and hitting on top. But I'll be darned if I can catch one up top. He's got a different means of fishing them. He sets out some lines in the back of his, uh, Boat and trolls for them. Hey, I get paid for this. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, been a little while. I kind of thought for a minute there that uh we were done for, but they started jumping back out there again, and uh, all of a sudden they started biting. Look like when they started doing that. Thing's beautiful. He got a. You look in his mouth. Right there in his mouth is red, red, red. Pretty neat. Let's see it again, do it, Yep. Oh. Nice fish. That's about right we was picking up to go home. And uh, up comes the jack. Ooh -wee. I can throw him back. You get enough? I got enough. Let's chunk this one back in. All these just badly lip hung a little bit. Good. Yeah, that's a good one to to release. Good job. Let somebody else catch him. Yeah. That's fun though. I guarantee you. It's uh it's something that I'll look forward to from year to year. <laughs> yeah. I got many of them left. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I'll look forward to the next time the restocking comes too. It's a as soon as the people catches on to this operation, I, I think there's going to be a crowd over here. Right now, there's hardly anybody. I see one man on the bank fishing, one guy in a boat, and that's it. Yeah. Except Goosey and me. That's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Now, we're just trying to pull our lines in right now, really, and leave. Caught two trying to leave. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's not bad. That's another one that can be released. That's another lucky one. Boy, ain't that the truth. You'd uh, be lucky till the water changes. Uh, hopefully somebody, some other lucky fisherman will catch him before uh, that happens. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I know I'm going to quit now. I done ran out of bait. And my rods is... Uh, we should have said we was going to catch and relief from the beginning since we said that. 
tearing them up just trying to get our lines in. All I'm trying to do is get my lines in where we can go home. <laughs> All right, Goosey. Have a good day, bro. That was a job. Great day. Messed up on that. I was kind of waiting on the camera to get some hook set on him, and uh, he hit it coming in or what? Yeah, it was coming in. Oh, he could have been on there, and I just didn't know. I knew he hit, and I was waiting for the yeah, camera. Yeah, he could have been on. coming to you, and you really yeah. didn't slack. But anyway, I tell you what, that's gonna be it for the day for us. Uh, you know, uh, Brex, that's a limit of, of four fish in their ponds, and, and, and for sure, Lamar Dixon, we need to probably set one too. I think we got 12 fish today, that's what we call it, so we're going to set ours at six a person. Uh, they fighting good, man. Uh, you know, this is two days after a major, major cold front just come through. And uh, it's starting on back on the warm side right now, and, and those trout are fighting good today. I don't know what they did doing the massive part of that cold front, but I mean, it was down in, in the teens for a little while, so nobody was fishing. But there's still a whole bunch of fish in this pond. I, I would say probably two or three hundred out of the thousand that was put in here has been caught. But if you look across there, you'll continuously see them flopping in the water. And, it's a huge pond, actually. Yeah, it is a huge pond. I'm going to try something different with these today. Uh, I'm going to fillet this mess of fish that we caught today. I'm going to fillet them just like we do. I normal speckle trout and sockelet and stuff and try them like that. Been frying them whole. Today I'm gonna try something a little bit different with them. And from Lamar Dixon, we see y'all on the next Ascension Outdoors. Whether it's keeping you warm through the winter, helping you get dinner on the table, or making sure your fresh catch is frying just right, Feral Gas makes your house a home. Our dependable nationwide network ensures you have propane when you need it. When choosing a propane supplier, you want the right partner. Feral Gas employees live right here in Louisiana, so they understand the needs that you have as a home propane user. Join the Feral Gas family today. All right, folks, welcome back. Man, I tell you what, that's, that's a uh, good thing to do and it's done become real popular, man. I tell you, we've got a few pictures of people fishing, catching rainbow trout this mm -hmm. year over there and uh, pretty enjoyable, man. And you know, fishing is fishing, but as a rule, they, they fairly aggressive sure. and they're not that difficult to catch if, right. when they feed. At times, you know, they, they can be. Yeah, just like you know, any other fish, This year they had right? times, you know, that people went there and some days didn't catch any and, right. and then at other times they go back and catch a mess Tear of them, up, you know. Oh, yeah. But they're like any other fish, you know, they bite at, at different times. Sometimes they don't bite, sometimes they do. Yeah. They eat stuff too that other fish eat also, you right. know, it ain't always like Rocky Mountain Stream fishing, you oh, know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it, it has been a fantastic uh, um, Addition event. to what we and get to do here. It sure it's has, cool. and it's getting more popular throughout the state, by the way. Right. All over. Yeah, all over. All right, well, this fish here was biting. I got a picture right here, Mr. Cole Dixon. Not very old there. Probably holds up his first bass, cost in the Amit River, using a live shiner fishing with his dad, Chad, on February the 15th. Man, he proud to be lipping that thing. Man. Oh, yeah, I don't blame him. I bet, I bet that one didn't go back. No. He probably brought that home to show oh, his man. mama and then, then probably made her cook it. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, that's what I'd have done too. That's right. Him. That's right. Here's Richard Smith and Ronnie Turkle, you know, holding a cup of trout. They caught fish in that Lamar Dixon yeah. now. Now, Ronnie caught one of them golden rainbows. I don't know how many of them they put in there this year, but uh, 
that's a beautiful fish it right there. It is absolutely gorgeous. That is a beautiful fish yeah. right there. I had no idea. I, we had been told he was going to put some in there, but uh, called him on golden corn too. So I yeah. mean, he bit his own color. But, but I don't like to say I don't know how many put in there. But I can say one thing: that is one pretty yeah, fish right there. That is a beautiful fish. fish. All right, next picture right out I got here is a proud young hunter, 11 year old Nick Steven, killed his first buck ever on January 17th this year at Rock Sea Hunting Club. Killed a doe last year and a doe a few weeks ago, but, but before he was, he was so excited when he shot this 5.135 pound buck. And you can see the smiles on him face, bro. Oh, yeah. That kid there is about, about as happy as they get. That's, that's a moment he'll never forget right, right there. Right. Congratulations, Nick, man. Uh, that's, that's a beautiful deer. Here's a beautiful fish right here called Joey Molaire caught this 10 pound, 14 ounce large mouth at uh, Lamar Dixon. Caught him January the 4th on a pink marshmallow. Yeah. That don't mean y'all got to start throwing pink marshmallows to catch large mouth bass. Although I promise it you. Might not be a bad idea. Man, I, <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, but that yeah. is a beautiful fish right there. He was actually fish for rainbows. Well, back in December, Natalie Molaire, this is a picture of her right here holding a stringer after a day of fishing at Lamar Dixon. Uh, looked like they, one large mouth on that string and right. four or five rainbows there. Yeah. Uh, looked like they had pretty good success in Lamar Dixon. That's right. It's a good place to go fish, man. Easy, easy, to, easy uh, to get there and easy to get around and keep it manicured, bro. You can't beat it. Yeah, beautiful place. All right, this is a, some fellas we know right here. A few of them, Clyde and Clay Savoy, left to right, along with Darren Park and Benny Graywall. Took the young men in the next picture, Blaze, Ridge, Colt, Matthew, Ethan, and Benjamin with 18 rabbits they killed at AC Hunting Club. That's same rabbits, two different groups of people. They a just good mess of rabbits, yeah. Couldn't all fit in the picture, but yeah. that's a uh, nice group of young kids that got a yeah. chance to go do some good rabbit hunting with uh, Clyde Savoy, and I guarantee you they had a good time. That's a oh, man, yeah. guy always got a good pack of dogs. Yeah, good man. Yeah, you're right. I'll tell you what, that, that's a good, for a local rabbit hunt, that's, that's, pretty, that's, pretty, good. that's pretty good yeah. right there, no doubt. Here's a mess of uh, rabbits killed in Ascension Parish by, in January by Wayne Bursa J. Boozy and Daryl Anderman and Vince Diaz uh, oh, well, with his dog Stacks. 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 Yeah, Tori Hayden took this uh, photo. I don't know if Tori was on the hunt or not, but he probably yeah. was. Nothing else. He probably talked about a couple of bunnies. But uh, good mess of little rabbits right there. That's about an average local hunt right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Dynamite, though. That's Congratulations, it. guys. All right, last picture I got right here is Cage Sheets with Shea Clean killed these green heads and teal on the second last weekend of the season in Gina, Louisiana, in flooded timber. That's something I've always wanted to do is do some timber hunting. Yeah, I used to do it all the time, man, when they had ducks in the Marpaw Swamp and yeah. all, and Spanish Lake in those days, it was fantastic. Uh, here's a nice buck right here. I don't believe it's killed no uh, flooded timber. John DePlessis killed a seven point with a 15 and a half inch spread in January. He killed it in Mississippi. Right. Um, 50 yard shot using a 30 yard six. And uh, also an eight point. Shot at the end of January in Mississippi, 150 yards again with a 35 wheeling. Congratulations, John. A couple of nice deer right yeah, there, buddy. Right. All right, folks, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Remember, you can send your pictures to Ascension Outdoors at etel.net or find us on Facebook, man. Like us and tag us in a photo, and we'd be glad to put you on TV. And we'll see y'all on the next Ascension Outdoors. <laughs>